Speaking of Dorsey, I've got to ask you about American Psycho. What's your take on the ending? Because uh, I actually interviewed the writer of the film, uh, Guinevere Turner, and she told me what the ending actually means. Well, I will tell you, before you reveal to me what the ending is, and I'm actually very excited to hear this, I have never really known. And to be honest, I, I read the book. I've read the book, honestly, three times because I'm horrible at reading books. When I pick a book up, I like to finish it in a short amount of time. So if I can't map out the time, I actually won't even read the book. Like I have a stack of books in my home that I haven't touched yet, and it's a real shame. Uh, one of them is uh, actually a uh, shame. I've tried to read that three times, and I've enjoyed it every time, but I just fall off the map trying to read it. But I, uh, I, I'm very humble in admittedness. I have never really understood the ending. I really haven't. I wasn't sure if it was all in his head. I wasn't sure if it had something to do with the medication that he was taking, because briefly throughout the film, it shows him fooling around with a prescription bottle if he's having uh, bouts of psychosis. We obviously can tell that he suffers from psychosis. He's not sure what's real and what's not. He's also a pathological liar. He has varying behavioral pattern symptoms of um, being a sociopath, a psychopath, possibly schizophrenic, multiple personality disorder. This is all stemming from him, I think, trying to find an elusive identity in a system that he actually hates. And he has moments, at least from my interpretation, where he's not sure who he is or who he wants to be. And if he even really wants to be in any of this, I think there's like a certain level of validity that he finds, or lack thereof, I should say, where he realizes how stupid all of this is. And he's trying so hard to fit into something that he actually resents, but he has nothing else to go to. Um, he's, he's, for a lack of better words, there's moments in time where I think he realizes he's completely fucked, but there's just nothing else for him. He's trapped in that, in that satire of the late 80s, early 90s, uh, fraudulent masculine projection Wall Street um, cesspool. Um, so I've never known, and I can't wait to hear this. By all means, please tell me. She said to me that what that ending of the film is, is that Patrick Bateman 100% did all of the, the murders and the crimes. Oh, and wow. his lawyer had uh, got the phone call from the night before, sent like a cleaner team to take care of him and apparently there'd been like a uh, watchers of Bateman and his family because you know the way there was a spin-off in the other books oh uh because his father owns the company they they said that yes mm -hmm. okay so he ba they basically had people who would cover up for him or clean up after him and uh his lawyer was there at Harry's bar for drinks uh just sort of saving face that's insane. And so is Patrick Bateman. Right? <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, so uh, but, uh, she and I spoke about the idea of uh, a, a, a real sequel because Patrick Bateman would be still alive today. Yes. So what, So we were talking about the idea of uh, just say they did one where he's going into politics or something. Oh, that would be so perfect. <laughs> that would Speaking be so perfect. 